USA. We are so glad that you're joining us this morning. We are a church that worships, cares, prays, communicates, and grows. My name is Haley Voorhees, and I'm your pastor of communication. There are many more of us doing lots of different things that you're going to find in your newsletter during the announcements and on our website, rivertreevineyard.com. So if you'd like to learn more about us, you can get connected with us that way. You can fill out a connect card in front of you or find one of us pastors or just look for someone who looks like they know what they're doing. We're here to help. We're so glad that you're with us this morning. So grab your coffee, grab your friends, and let's head into some worship. Good morning. Oh, I look a little sleepy this morning. If you're out there in the atrium, put that sugar in that coffee. Let's go. We're ready to worship this morning. Thank you for being here. How about we stand and praise the Lord? Right 
is healing every wound your blood is making all things new your blood speaks a better word your blood the measure of my Speaks a better word, speaks a better word. In singing out with life, in shouting down the lies, it echoes through the night. The precious blood of Christ speaks.
song is uh, called Jesus, and that's the name that we hope everybody calls out to when we need your help. And Lord, I just want to pray for the people that that are having ailments and health concerns, and Lord, we pray that you just lift them up, send healing to them, and Lord, I pray for sick and the homeless and the people that just need you so desperately, Lord. Um, we sing this next song for you, in Jesus' name.
invite you in this place. Day and night. 
sing it out. high lifted up you're in the name above all names Jesus and in all your holiness and all your beauty you invite us to come you call us friends you walk with us through the good times and the bad times and when we stumble Lord you are there to pick us up there's always an invitation to come. There's always an invitation to receive grace and love. Your hand is always extended to us in our times of need. In those times where we think there is no hope. I pray, Lord God, you would speak to the hearts who feel that way today, that there is no hope. That your love will lift up the hearts who have lost hope. When all seems dark, God, you are the brightest of lights. The brightest of lights, Lord. I just pray against all the lies and all the, um, the wiles of the enemy that would speak otherwise. I pray those voices be silent and that your voice be the one heard. Speak softly, but you are the loudest voice, Lord. So we just worship you. We thank you that you call us friends, that you know us by name, and you see us. Your thoughts of us are as numerous as the sand. So we just thank you. We worship you and honor you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. to do a little something this morning but only only if you feel comfortable um, doing this if you all could just stand again with me and you know we talk about church being a family we are a church family what I'd like you to do is go find somebody you have never met before give them your name that's all just exchange names and then I challenge you after service see if you can find that same person and remember their name. So go meet somebody new.
course, the youth are just going to hang out here by themselves. Okay, you all can have a seat. Sounds like you're having fun. So I just have a few short announcements. Um, you know, you can read everything in this bulletin that's on the front table, but there are just one or two things I want to highlight. Um, Saturday, October 21st, we are having a prayer workshop. And a lot of times we talk about spiritual gifts and I believe God imparts spiritual gifts to each and every one of us. Yeah. And if you'd like to know about more about what your gift is or, you know, um, just want to go exercise your gifts, it's, it's going to be a really good workshop. It's led by, is it Sherry? Are you leading that? Oh, Michelle. I'm sorry. Michelle Burris is leading that. But they're interchangeable, Michelle. And... <laughs> Also, um, as you saw the video last week, we have the youth going on a uh, joint retreat next week. If you still want to sponsor or partially sponsor someone, they could still use some funds. See Haley for that. She was the one playing the piano over here. Okay. Um, and speaking of giving, we just appreciate this being a, a, such a giving church. Um, not just money. You people give of your time, of your energy. Um, so if you're interested in, in giving your time, as you see on this sheet, volunteers are always needed. Um, and that's a good way to meet people too. Like if you want to become a greeter on Sunday morning, you'll meet everybody as they walk in the door. Yeah. Um, what else? Oh, one of our congregants, Kathy S., if you're watching online, hello. Um, she just had surgery last week, so we're praying a quick recovery for her. And she's watching us online today. So I just wanted to say hi. We're praying for you. We hope everything gets better. That's it. Did I cover everything? Yeah, I think so. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for this day. Thank you for each and every person in this room. Father, you are worthy of it all. You're the only one who's worthy. Amen. And as we're going through a times of, of trial and stress, we know we can count on you. Lord, we love you so much. Thank you for this day. Bless John as he brings a word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Awesome. How's everybody doing? Amen. Hey, this is just an excuse for me to give my uh, wife a hug. Can I just do that? We appreciate Miss Carol a lot. You know, I, I made the mistake, I think, the last time that we were kind of on the stage together like that, that referring her to a popular game show hostess, which I probably should have referred myself to that way, right, being kind of the assistant, because anybody who's been married for a, a bit kind of recognizes that it's a, uh, it's a mutual, you know, uh, society of admiration and care and love. It took me a long time to kind of figure that out. In fact, I'm still trying to figure that out, right, that God has created those you know, in that marriage relationship, uh, equal but different, right? But the key operative word there is equal. And that's an important word. We find that right out of the gate in Genesis. So, no, this isn't a message about marriage, as per se, but it is a message of just encouragement. And I, I do encourage you and, and, uh, and love you deeply. Hey, listen, I, uh, I wanted to start today out by saying one word, and, and you probably were wondering, well, why haven't we heard that word yet? Well, here it is, Israel. Israel. Israel obviously has come under attack and uh, is in what some are calling, you know, maybe the worst attack, you know, in their 75-year history. Um, some are calling it, you know, maybe Israel's 911. Some have been calling it, you know, the Pearl Harbor, you know, of Israel. And I, and I get that. And then maybe just one kind of image that has stuck with me over the last day or so has been the number of, of children and, and students and grandmas and grandpas 
that have been uh, really just um, uh, horrifically hurt, injured, killed, uh, many kidnapped. There's just a lot going on. And I don't need to be a, a you know, Fox or CNN reporter, but here's the deal. Let's take a moment and let's just pause. And let's just be, you know, here's what I want to say first. Uh, you know, some might be saying, well, why in the world could a good God allow that? You know, kind of in the homeland, if you will. How in the world could that happen? Well, here's a thought. Because of God's mercy and because of his great love for everyone, he's keeping that door open just a bit more, right? The Bible tells us that door is going to close one day, but it hasn't happened yet. It's the opportunity for all of us to be able to come to the table of God. Let's pause a moment, and I, I just want you in your own words just to shoot up a prayer for Israel and for certainly um, for the Gaza Strip and certainly for the West Bank, certainly for the Palestinians. Just pray for peace. Dear Lord, hear the prayers of your people. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I don't know about you, but I'm still kind of stuck in worship just a little bit. Yeah. I'm still thinking about Yeshua Jesus. I'm still thinking about the significance of calling out his names. I'm still thinking about the healing in his hands, that one lyric in the song that has, I think, impacted me even as I um, bring the word today bring the message. We've been on a series of talks called Red Letters. As we, as we remember the red letters or maybe the Jesus speak might be another way to say it. Pastor Mark last week, he talked to us, uh, I think brilliantly. He brought us the story of the unmerciful servant, the, the uh, parable that Jesus taught his disciples. And, and, and one phrase that's, that's still lingering and stuck with me, and thank you, Pastor Mark, is that we have been called to pass it on. Right? We are people that are designed to do that. Extravagant generosity. People that, um, that just have, uh, the, that are the beacons of the light, of the unlimited love of God. If there's a challenge point today, that might be right in there somewhere. I don't know. But I want to get right to the message today so that we can continue on with our worship and with our um, certainly uh, blessing of, of Jesus as we remember the red letters that God speaks right in the person of Jesus. Think of that for a second. That's what we're talking about when we talk about red letters. The red letters in the Bible, the, the ones that you've seen or maybe, you know, are a little harder to identify in your, uh, on your Apple or on your, you know, uh, uh, your phone, whatever that might be, you, you might not kind of catch it the same way. Maybe it's a little bit of a generational thing. But here's the deal. It's when Jesus is speaking to us, whether it's the first century or whether it's the 21st 21st century. Jesus, the, the eternal uh, God, right, from before the beginning is speaking to us today. It, it, ought to, it ought to grab our attention, do you think? Sorry about that. Let me adjust that. Did that drive you just as crazy as it did me? Yes, it did. We are in a process right now of, of sensing through the red letters that, uh, that God is giving us a moment to change our life. So why wouldn't we be thinking about that? Every time we hear the red letters that, that God is speaking instruction to us. He's speaking clear to, um, instructions to us in our life. And, and maybe just to set up the red letter passage that I want to use today, which is Matthew 25. And, you know, there's a charitable organization named Matthew 25, which you'll get in just a minute. And you might want to Google that real quick if you don't know what I'm talking about. But let me just set up the, the context to Matthew 25. It's, 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 it's the final judgment. It's, it's, it's God in the person of Jesus giving us a heads up of what's coming. We ought to be paying attention to that. It's about a bridegroom. It's, it's about this, this bridegroom. It's, it's Christ. And, and the church is, is the who? The, the, the church is the bride. He's speaking our language to us in our own life. We're catching that today. And, uh, and, and in this uh, setup this morning to Matthew, you know, to the passage I want to use, which I think is uh, Matthew uh, 25, verse 44. But I, you need to know a couple of things, right, that's going on besides the bridegroom, besides the final judgment, right? God is, is, a, is a God that speaks the truth. He talks about goats and sheep, right? Now, I'm not going to ask you necessarily to stand and ask who are the goats. I might. 
Who are the goats and the sheep that are in the room? You, you might want to even dwell on that just a little bit as, as we go forward. And I'm going to ask um, Carol to, to read that passage um, that will help me out greatly. We're going to read Matthew chapter 25, verses 44 through 46. Then they will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and not help you? And he will answer, I tell you the truth. When you refuse to help the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you are refusing to help me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous will go into eternal life. It's a little sobering, isn't it? It, It's a reminder about our own life. It does have consequences of the decisions that we make. Thank God for his grace and for his mercy and for his care in our own life. Don't get me wrong. It's incredibly important to catch that. But there are these red letter points that I want to kind of use the, the time I have left this morning with you. And that is to talk about the red letter points today that come out of this, I think, this passage certainly it comes out of the words of Jesus right I mean we're you you have um, I, I don't know about you but I'm, I'm looking for a few points to help me in my life I'm I'm also thinking the Bengals might be you know wanting a few points today too should should we pause and pray for no I'm, I'm not going to do that that might be a little over the top you can do that in your own time though I'd be okay but let's talk about these these points and and oh by the way anybody know what a PAT is points after touchdown right PAT those are going to be my points so if you're looking for a way to remember it and I might just say that one time you just have got a little bit of an insight to how to do that because if I lose my place I'm going to be remembering that or trying to that's for sure the first one of these I think points that we find in Matthew 25, that we certainly we we find in God's red letters, is is remembering, you know, that um, that it's about others. That's what's primary. It's about caring for others. Somehow or another, I always thought it was about me. Huh. Somehow or another, I always thought that it was more self-directed. But as it turns out, maybe not so much. There's a primary purpose, and in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, and. And I'm, I'm going to use the King James Version. And, uh, and I just remind you, you, use the version of the Bible that you know that you'll obey. That's what I want to encourage you to do. Use the version of the Bible that you'll follow and that you'll obey and, and to do that. But, I, but let me read Luke chapter 19, verse 10. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. It's, it's, it's fundamental. It's, it's a recognition that, that if you're thinking, well, what is our primary mission, peeps, right? I'm going to just assume you're all the sheep. Sheeps, what, what in the world is our mission at River Tree Church to draw people to the table of God? To be, to be drawn into relationship with the God of the universe. He's calling us back. He's, again, holding the door open for you. Maybe just a little longer. Some of us have been goats. I'll raise my hand. Some of us have been resistant to that, and God is saying, no, it's time. I mean, can you imagine the, the flurry of activity that's going on in Israel right now with missionaries and with you know, uh, humanitarians and with the local militia and with the emergency you know, uh, the, the drivers that are caring for all the emergency efforts you know, and just the care? They mobilize the whole country. To seek, you know, in this case, you know, the injured. But what would it look like? Sheeps? I won't use that again. What would it look like if we had that type of focus? What would it look like in my life if I had that focus to seek the lost? What what if that was my primary responsibility? What if that was the, the piece that I ought to be focused on more and more in my life? I want to do that. I, you probably have heard pastor types and church types and, and worship leader types and prayer types, people that just say, you know what, I, I just am trying to bring as many people along with me into <laughs> eternity. I, I want to take the whole gang. I want to take my family in. I want to take my school in with me. I, I want to take my friends with me. I mean, how much do we really care about one another about stuff like that? 
points it. Did I get your attention? Got awful quiet on me. Number two is, is a point after touchdown, and it's, I think it's just, a, a, again, maybe it's primary, but in this particular case, it's the A, it's attitude. It's our attitude. It's about how we look at things. It's about our mindset. It's about, you know, so, so often we forget that the mind and the attitude are linked. I mean, my, my mind, uh, uh, absolutely, uh, at times when, when it's focused on God, excuse me, on God things, it is, is the antidote to my stinky attitude. You know what I mean? You, you have an opportunity to, to read the red letters, to, to get linked in with what God is saying to you. I encourage you to do that. It will change your attitude and it will do it for good. I was reminded of 1 Corinthians 2.16 and again using the King James Version for, for who hath known who hath knows the mind, right, of the Lord, that he may, excuse me, may he may instruct us, but we have the mind of Christ, which is the key point, right? We, we don't instruct God. We live in a culture that thinks that, well, we know a little better than maybe what God does. Maybe God's words, his red letters are obsolete. Maybe they're old-fashioned. Maybe they're out of date, but maybe they're not, <laughs> Maybe they're real. Maybe we're going to watch things unfold in the Middle East that will be, that'll be mind-blowing. Maybe we'll see things that will unfold in our communities and in our offices and our church that will absolutely change our attitude, that will, that will change things and draw us closer to God. Here's a, just a quick little stop, maybe just to address our students that are here. Can we appreciate our students today? Can we say thank you for... <laughs> encourage them. Bless them. Come alongside them. Let them lead. Here's, here's what I might want to say to the students today. I want to say that, you know what, you guys are the techie generation. There's no doubt about that. I mean, don't get me wrong. Maybe the older cats and ladies and men, and et cetera, and generations are, are catching on. But you guys are the, are the techs. You are. And, and you know that artificial intelligence, right, is here. You know it. It's already here. And so I would just say, get this, students. As believers, you get the mind of Christ. And that's real intelligence. <laughs> that, that doesn't have some kind of artificial feel to it. And it has in, eternal implications that will never end, that go forever. God bless you and your continuing pursuit to follow Jesus. Third PAT is, is touch. And, and you might be thinking, well, is this the touchdown part? And, and I don't know, maybe it might be. But here's where I really want to say it's about the hands of Jesus. It's, it's really about the humanity of, of Jesus that God, you know, called himself the son of man. Can, can you imagine that? That the God of the universe relates to us. He relates to students. He relates to, to women that have been abused and hurt and, and, and men that have been shamed or neglected or left behind or he, he, he just, he understands the imprisoned. He understands the naked. He, he catches that. He sends us himself to us being drawn to that together today. I, I think I've got a, a picture that I want to flash up and I might just linger here for just a moment or two. I'm not sure. Have I shown that before on Sunday? I don't know if I have or not, but that's at the market at, at Milford Shopping Center. And Haley, I'm going to try to stay composed for a minute. That, that is a line that collects, right, of humanity from Milford um, and Miami Township and Goshen, Loveland, all over Claremont County and, and places beyond. They start lining up hours before the market opens. It's a free food store that's operated by Impacting Tomorrow that your River Tree Church has been instrumental in being able to help and to continue that ministry. And there they are, pressed up against the glass. <laughs> It's a sea of humanity that, as you can imagine, 
are confused. They feel somewhat marginalized. Many don't have clothes, literally, you know, at least more than an outfit or two. Many are hungry. Many have friends and families that are imprisoned, whether you look at that physically or whether you look at that spiritually. Many are, are, are homeless. Again, really homeless or maybe just, you know, figuratively, you know, in a sense that there's just no spirituality in their life. You know, that is our, that's our goal, to seek the lost, the missing, the empty. God has called us. See, here's the rub. The rub is, and this isn't an official timeout or anything. Sometimes I'll use that when I teach. Today, it's, it's the rub. The rub is, is very simply um, what people ask me all the time at the market. They'll come up to me and they'll say, um, hey, John, they'll say, um, do, you, do you really think that these people are, really need the food? Do you, do you really think after maybe looking at the car they're driving or maybe looking at what's in their, their car trunk or whatever that, oh my gosh, do you really think they need those clothes? Do you think, don't you think they have maybe enough? They look like, they look, they look like they're doing okay. So to, 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 to the answer to that might be, and I use this almost every time now because I'm trying to be more courageous when I, when I, I don't try to get ugly. Sometimes I've, I've done that. I've kind of been snarky and that can rub the, me the wrong way, that hypersensitivity about others. I mean, I get that. But, but I, I will say, yeah, what I, I'm saying to people now when they ask me that question, I'll say there's only one person that knows the answer to that and it's not me. It's only one person that knows the answer to that and it ain't me. I've got two questions and then we're going to pray and then we're going to sing an anthem of worship to the Lord if you're kind of keeping track of things. I'm trying to. I've got two questions first and you don't have to answer this out loud. In fact, please don't. <laughs> just, just, just internalize this. And uh, you might want to take these out with you as you go as a, as a challenge component. But uh, I've got just two questions to ask you. Who does, who does the line see? Can, can we put the picture back up? Who does the line see that uh, uh, when, when, they, when they see, you know, you? And, I mean, when, they, when they're looking through that window at people on the inside or maybe folks that are helping the volunteers. Don't, don't you wonder who are they, who are they seeing? Are, are they, are, I hope so. Are they seeing Jesus in their own life or, you know, in, in the situation? That, that might be the, the, the reminder to that, that the finger is pointed this way. Do, do others see Jesus in me? The way that I respond, the way that I talk to my wife, which, believe me, I need a lot of work on that. <laughs> well, folks, thanks for coming. That concludes the, the talk today. God bless you. Have a great life. <laughs> I told you, honey, not to sit up front. Oh, well. <laughs> You're too close to me. Uh, actually, you can't get close enough. She is the love of my life. I've been dating her since she was in high school. And I have loved her every day of my life. And we've had, it has not been perfect, trust me. <laughs> but God is good. And there might be somebody here today that needed to hear that. Hold on, hang on, it's going to be okay. You'll get through this. Pray. Ask the red letters to speak to you. Might be a couple of people that maybe you need to apply that as Sean said such a wonderful prayer about those that have given up on hope. I just pile on that. Maybe there's some that are here today that just need to, to reverse course, right? You've, been, you've tried the hopeless part. How about trying for hope, right? Call hope out. Hope has a name, has a face. Has a, it's the son of, of man. It's Jesus. Jesus is the picture of hope. So if God is speaking to you today, and I believe that he is, and if we're listening to the red letters, what is your response? 
What is your response to the, to the red letters today? I, I'm feeling like in, in my own life, and, I, and you can just kind of pile on in your, in your own way as you pray to the Lord as well. But I'm thinking certainly to, to, to lift up Israel. I'm, I'm, I'm sensing that corporately, and, and, and we'll do that. I, I feel like that it's to lift up the Palestinians, right? God has, God has given us the opportunity to reach both. To care and, and to love for those. Did, did you know that, that uh, prior to the, uh, Israel becoming a state in 1948, I think, uh, prior to that, 80% of Palestinians were believers? Did you know that? Missionaries that are in the Middle East, I've been to Lebanon, I've been to Tyre, I've been to Sidon. I've done ministry to the Palestinians, to the Arabs. I've done m- much ministry to, you know, of course, uh, those that are from Israel, not in the country, but mostly in, in the states. So we want to pray for and lift up Israel. We want to lift up Palestine. We want to lift up Ukraine. The, the horror of war is real. I want to lift up America. I want to lift up the goats and sheep. <laughs> I want to help feed the hungry. I want to be able to help the naked the imprisoned, the stranger. I want to lift up Jeff across the street. I want to bless my neighbors that sometimes get on my nerves. Will you pray with me? And I just want to remind you that, um, that we will have prayer teams up front that want to pray with you today that can take you to a whole another place than I can from the front like this. They are so well equipped to be able to lead you into a relationship with Jesus. They are so well equipped to be able to ask God to bring healing and health to your body or to your spirit. They're just good peeps. We love them deeply. Miss Carol, will you help me? Let's pray, and then we're going to ask you to stand, and then we will, um, we'll sing an anthem of worship to the Lord that maybe you, you know of, maybe as a child or, or maybe as an adult, you remember this song. So God, we do lift up to you right now. We lift up to you, Israel. We intercede on behalf of your people. We cannot get past that they are your people and that you have called them. You have called all of us by name, and you love all of us deeply. So pray, we pray that you would protect the mamas and the papas and the grandmas and grandpas and all the little children, everyone that's being impacted in, in what's going on right now in Israel. We don't even have the words for this, but you do. So we call your red letters out to help us as we walk through this. Lift up the Palestinians. Lift up Ukraine. Lift up America, the country that we're in, oh God. The schools that we go to every day the jobs we go to, the plants that we work in, the fields that we cultivate. God, would you lift up the goats and the sheep? Would you help all of us to be able to have, while there's still time on the clock, to be able to come to the table? Would you help us to be able to feed the hungry, to be able to help the naked, to be able to be there for the imprisoned, for the stranger? We do pray, God, for our brother Jeff. We do pray that you would open all of our eyes to you. We we pray, oh God, that you would speak life into each one of us as we minister to our neighbors and to our friends and to ourselves, God. Your spirit is alive and well on planet Earth. You're alive, oh God. May we be reminded of that. And God, as we sing this song, would you be worshiped? And people, would you go ahead and stand with me? Let's go ahead and stand. You might know this song, All Hail. What's that? Oh, yeah. Prayer teams can join me up front as well. And we're going to sing All Hail, the power of Jesus' name. If you know it, please sing it with me. All hail the power of Jesus' name. name let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him, Lord of all.
It's all red. But red is off. It's all okay. Okay. Thank you. So, anyway, I gotta get a picture of that. You do that so well. You know, we only got about a half a dozen cases left. Really? Yeah. Yeah. The bananas, when I took, when you took your four boxes right. up there, right. the guy said, well, you don't need that many up there. They got all the They're all gone, gone. yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and you know what they're doing right now? Here's the good news. They're turning yellow. You know, usually we're on the other side of the curve. This time we had it just right. Right? So by the time they get they start eating them today and Monday. Some of those bananas come in real hot, so the sun had to be on the boxes. Mm -hmm. They were hot. Yep. They, they, they were. And they're probably right. Yeah. Thank you. I love you guys. Thank, thank you. Appreciate you. Love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's more downstairs. Do it. There's a lot of there's more produce downstairs. Please. Because we should help our family, yep. church family too. Yep. Yep. Well, let me God's told me that God's told me that's a time of healing. He said one year. Wow.
probably just incorporate when we meet with that. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, what days are good for you? Primarily the weekends. If you need a weekday, Friday, or um, actually Wednesday would also work too. Like after work day. Mm -hmm. When do you get off work? Okay. Nice job, Haley. I'm thinking Wednesday, whatever that day is. Am I? Good. How's uh how's the lights going? Interesting. Having a bunch of stuff that I wouldn't normally have. It's just like, oh yeah. <laughs> Did she have a lot of things? Not new furniture or clothes, but a lot of stuff. Like she wanted a brush. So now waking up to so many brushes, it's like never having a brush. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You probably don't need a brush. <laughs> Unless I want to fluff it out again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. Maybe we could talk more about that on the 18th, too. Be good to get a read on how the relationship is going and things like that. I'm just putting my, see what happens is if I don't put my stuff in one spot, I'll leave and I'll forget something. And I'll go all the way home and I'll forget my cell phone or something. And I'll have to go back to it. Putting it all somewhere. Make sure it's all one place with like four of them. Yeah. Yeah. Collecting my things. One time I left my cell phone in Columbus. The other day, I the keys weren't in the right spot, and Haley didn't have her key. Yeah, you know, it's just so I'm all like, I'm like, I'm just thinking about other things that sometimes the practice will come, and I don't have a read on. So That's like bad. outer space a little bit. That's so bad. Something that happens. Dalton's living at your house for some time? Yeah, three years. Really? Whoa. How big is your house? It's an average three inch. Mm -hmm. Three bedroom. Oh, nice. Where is it again? Springdale. Springdale. Yep. Nice. That's not too far. Yeah, it's not too far, but it's just easier. Yeah. It's my highway. Same with us, yeah. About the same. Do you like Korean food? Oh yeah. A lot Have of you been up to Top Pot? Top 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 Pot in uh, Springdale? I didn't even know it was Korean food until it was Top Pot Springdale. Yeah, it's um uh it's hot pot. It's 
called Top Pot, but they have Hot Pot. They give you a pot and they give you a little burner in front of you. And then you like cook your own food. And they also have a grill on the table. And you can like grill your own meat and stuff. Like you have Korean barbecue. Do you have Korean stuff or are they supply it? They supply it. You pay like 20 bucks for lunch or 30 for dinner. Depends on what time you go. But basically you order whatever you want off the menu. You say, I want lamb, steak, uh, uh, short rib, uh, pork belly, you know, whatever you want. Um, and then you cook it and you eat it. And if you want more, it's all you can eat for two hours. Oh, oh, for two hours, so there's but a limit. You don't need, you really don't need two hours. And so I was there a place like that uh, a couple weeks ago and we were just eating meat just cooking up meat and just eating it eating it eating it i got so full i thought i was gonna explode i really did it snuck up on me too but it was good it was good a friend of mine uh, used to be a vegan like for years he was a vegan and he was So they have pork belly wrapped in garlic butter. Uh, and they have like gorgie, which is the Korean barbecue. And they already, it's already made. You just put it on the grill. That's fun. Yeah. You get there before four. So it's like that. So that's the only thing. No bad blood. 